What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I hope you like this video. This is Filthy Rich Season 1, Episode 9. So, the season slash series finale, I guess, is the next episode, unless y'all get Fox to change their mind about canceling this show, but I don't know. But anyway, we pick up, and the baby is missing, and everybody is blaming themselves, right? The baby said of blaming herself, because she said she left to go hang out with Eric and try to get her a little peace, you know, the grandmother, yummy, 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 whatever, is blaming herself because she said that, you know, maybe she was playing too much. Remember, she pulled a little okie doke on the little, on the 820 club, you know. She pulled the okie doke, had told him that her son was going to throw the fight, and he really didn't throw the fight. So, everybody, um, Ginger's blaming herself, saying, oh, he came there looking for me. Because they know that it was at Panama, and Ginger knows that's the same guy that kidnapped her. So, she was like, oh, he came back looking for me. <laughs> Excuse me. So everybody think it's their fault that the baby is missing. Okay. At the end of the day, the only person that doesn't feel like that is Becky. Becky was like, listen, when he came in there, he knew exactly what he was doing. He was looking, he knew exactly what was going on and exactly what he was doing. Now she does feel like though, if she had given birth, oh, because Becky had the baby child. Um, she feels like if she had given birth, that maybe he would have taken the baby. But uh-uh. If you had given birth, he was going to kill your baby because he thinks that your baby is the devil and he thinks that Jesus is the savior, the second coming. That's why he thinks, so, no, you did good not to have that baby. Um, Eric thinks that this is a sign by, from God that they're supposed to be together and work it out. And Becky was like, no, that's not what it is, boo. Mm -mm, no, we're not supposed to be together. Don't read too much into it. Now... Down to the Sunny Club, the, the to the to the online, you know, to the uh, Margaret is 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 asking everybody for help. They got the phone lines going, people calling in tips. They looking for the baby. Okay, they they working all on all cylinders. They are working. Now down to the church, they having to wait for um for the new for what's the name? What's what's the newspaper guy name? I I, I was going to make a name up. Y'all know I'm good with making a name up. I ain't even gonna make no name up. But I'm thinking to myself. That was a quick ass wait. Like, I, I mean, that was quick. But anyway, um, Ginger and Franklin are down to the wait. And Ginger is telling Franklin, look, something ain't right here. Because he had a whole wall, a whole wall with everything set up, with all of the plays and pictures of everybody and who's connected to who and who probably did it and who's involved and who's not involved. She was like, all that is missing. So something is going on. Whoever killed him, and she keeps playing that, that voicemail that he left her where you can hear somebody knocking on the door. She said, I don't think it's Hagamon because he is a professional killer. Like, he wasn't going to knock the door, to, knock on the door and kill him. He would have snuck in behind him. She said, when he kidnapped me, he, was, he came out of nowhere. He moved in silence. Like, it wasn't all of that. So she's not convinced that Hagamon did it. And Franklin is listening to her like, okay, well, like, he had really put all that together. She said, yeah, you know, he said, well, yeah, he was trying to tell me the same thing. He was trying to convince me that, you know, these people were in included or whatever, whatever. So, so we got all that going on, honey. Okay. Now, um, Mark is getting, not Mark. Is it Mark? Mark is getting out of jail. And who comes to pick him up? Victoria. And she, he was like, listen, I got something I got to tell you. She was like, you're, you're the, you're really Mark. Jason was your brother, and that was my son. So you're my son's brother. He was like, yeah, you know, um, I just couldn't live with that. Oh, because remember, he was like, I'm not going to let Paul be blackmailing me. He was like, yeah, I just couldn't live with that over my head anymore. I just couldn't live with that. And she was like, yeah, she, he said, um, well, why are you still being nice to me? Because I think she done bailed him out of jail. She picked him up from jail and everything. And she was like, because you were my son's brother, like at the end of the day, you're the closest thing to my son. So I'm still going to take care of you. Like, I took care of my son. Like, I still, you know, I still believe, you know, love you the same way. Now, Ginger then went to go visit Becky down to, um, went to go visit Becky down to the, um, the hospital. And, again, Ginger is all, it's my fault. I'm so sorry. And Becky was like, girl, don't flatter yourself. This was not about you, okay? It was not that serious, okay? At the end of the day. Um, at the end of the day, um, if he wanted, 
you know, if he was looking for you, he'd have found you. He wasn't even looking for me, okay? So, and then they pretty much had that conversation about them not really being together, like not hooking up and becoming a couple, you know, like it being sort of like a moment, a passing in time type situation. No, you're on the set. Sorry about that. Now, Paul done showed up to talk to Margaret, talking about some anything you need, you know I got your back, you know, I'm ready to go on air and, you know, and, and get everybody in line and say your prayer and stuff. And Margaret was like, you know what? Ain't nobody got time for you. And you know what? I'm tired of you. I'm tired of the 1820. I'm tired of all of this. You know what? You are fired. He was like, wait a minute, what? You can't fire me? She was like, the hell? You're fired. I don't want you to have nothing to do with me or this um, network. Get to stepping. Don't let the door hit you with a good little flitch. You know, all of that. And he really was sitting there feeling like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe she fired me. Now, remember what they told us is that Paul holds all the secrets. So Paul must have felt like whatever he knew about Margaret and the family, that it would be more than enough to um, keep him employed. But Margaret must not have cared, honey, because she was like, you got to get up out of here. So she fired him. Now, Eugene, Eugene had made his way down to his childhood church, right? And he then ran into one of his childhood, well, not friends, but somebody that went to the church with him. And Eugene was like, I don't know you. He was like, I ain't been here since I was a kid. He was like, yeah, I know who you were. He said, I know exactly who you are. He was like, he was like, you the rich man, I'm the poor man. Look, we both ended up right here together. And it looks like the church has been abandoned. I don't know if it's like a victim of one of the hurricanes down in New Orleans or whatever, but definitely the church, ain't nobody been worshiping there in a long time. And so... Eugene was like, you know, because he was praying to God, like, listen, I did everything you asked me to do, and things still keep going wrong. Like, I'm not understanding, you know, Lord, please guide me in the direction you want me to go. Please tell me what you want me to do. So, um, um, him and the dude link up, right? They decide, you know, they, they end up linking up. Eugene was like, listen, you know, I got some, some I want you to help me with or whatever. So, they end up linking up. Peter goes to visit Becky down to the hospital, and Becky lets Peter know, listen, I just ain't got nothing for you. Like, you my brother, and you know, I love you, but right now, I'm just feeling some kind of way because she knows exactly how deep he, he runs and how involved he is with all of the 1820 stuff, and even with the whole making him stay with Eric and threatening Eric's life and all of that. Like, she lets him know, listen, I see you, you see me, we see each other, okay? And... Now, Rachel is really blaming herself because Rachel was the one that's supposed to be babysitting the baby, right? Um, and she's feeling so guilty. She's still down there working the phone banks. But Rachel, I mean, but uh, Rose tells her girl, like, you need to just go on and get out of here. Because Rachel act like she feel like everybody's looking at her. She feels like everybody's staring at her. And girl, ain't nobody really looking at you like that. But I understand if you feel that way. I mean, I can't tell you that you don't feel that way. You know what I'm saying? But girl, ain't nobody really staring at you. But anyway, she goes to leave and she runs into Eric and... Eric ain't trying to talk to her, and she was like, please talk to me, and he told her, he said, listen, I, you know, you're the sweetest person I ever met, but I just can't be with you, like, I just can't do it, but I don't want you to take it personally, you know, I do love you, I, I you know, all of that, but girl, we just can't, we can't do this, so then, Rose and, um, Mark, they end up having a conversation, now, supposedly, Rose went to New York and had this abortion. I don't know if I'm convinced that she did it, okay? I really am not convinced that it actually happened. But her and Mark get to talking. Long story short, child, they done made up, okay? They done made up, and we'll get to them later. We'll get back to them. Then we have Paul down in his studio praying. You know, he's praying to the Lord or whatever. And who come walking in? Hagamon. And Hagamon tells him, basically, okay, you have served your purpose. You know, you basically are no longer needed. And Paul is all apologizing now because he realizes that. I think he realizes that Hagamon is there up to no good. He talking about something. No, it was a misunderstanding. I didn't fire you. You know, you misunderstood. Hagamon was like, really? I misunderstood? Nah, bruh. I understood. You perfectly fine. You you told me my services were no longer needed. Like, I ain't misunderstand that. Um. And then Hagamon shoots Paul. Child, so Paul dead. Okay, Paul is dead. So whatever secrets Paul had, they died with him. Okay, the secrets and died with him. So Ginger and Margaret have a conversation. 
And again, Ginger is blaming herself. And Margaret is telling her, girl, it is not your fault. You didn't do anything wrong. And she invites um, her to come down, you know, and spend, spend some time down um, to the little, you know, the little, the little farmhouse with her. Now, the whole family... The whole family is down, you know, um, Eric and Ginger, all of them. The whole family is down there pleading um, on the TV, pleading for everybody to save Jesus' child. Rachel is leaving town, honey. Rachel then made her way down to the bus station. She tried to buy her bus ticket. But what does she see? She sees Hagamon with the baby. She follows them out of the, the bus station. Hagamon is sitting there with the baby. She hits him over the head with her stiletto child, and she takes the baby and starts running. Hagamon chases her, runs into the street, and he gets hit by a car, right? Guess who's driving the car, though? Eugene and his new friend down from the church. Baby, and listen, and they keep going. I said, okay, well, they let them keep going. But um, Rachel ends up taking the baby back to the, um, back to the studio. So everybody is happy. Everybody is reunited. The baby is, you know, the baby back with his family and all that good stuff. And Rachel now, all her guilt has been, you know, she don't feel guilty anymore. Her guilt has been, a, 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 you know, and, every, and of course, everybody was like, it was a miracle, 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 right? Because they had been praying, 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 praying. And it all happened on air. So, you know, of course, that just, you know, kicked everything through the roof, child. Now, Franklin comes down there and... You know, Franklin is playing nice, but you can tell Franklin is feeling some kind of way, okay? He's still really not feeling hot. You know, he still really ain't happy, okay, about the fact that Margaret is curving him after they done slept together. So, Eric goes to his mama. Eric got this briefcase. Now, he had been carrying this briefcase, this little bag, around the whole episode, but you ain't really think nothing of it. Child, Eric didn't confess to his mama that he went down there to go talk to that reporter to just convince him not to run the story, to convince them that he had it all wrong, that the people he thought were, you know, that, that him and his mother didn't have anything to do with the scandal and to make sure that him and his mom weren't going to get caught up in the scandal. Baby, he said it was an accident, but he the one that done killed the reporter, and he was the one that took everything down off the wall, and he showed it to his mother. Listen, mama said, look, I, you know, what you did wasn't good, but you my baby, and I'm not about to let you go to jail. I'm going to take care of it. Mama going to take care of it. You go on about your business. Pretend like everything is okay, and I'm going to handle it. You're not going to jail on my watch, okay? That's not going to happen. So Franklin ends up coming in there. And Mar actually, I have to rewind. Margaret starts putting together all the proof. And Margaret starts breaking everything down. And so when Franklin comes in there, Margaret says, listen, I've been going through all of this. You know, he, he tells Franklin that Eric was the one that did it, right? But she says, but what I can't understand is if the pilot was already a dead man, why would Eugene pay the pilot before, however it worked out, child, anyway, however it worked out, Margaret was able to break down the fact that it wasn't Eugene that did it. It was really Franklin. And Franklin was like, listen, let me tell you something. Um, and he goes all the way back to when they was kids. And he talked about that night. He said, you know, I've been waiting for you ever since that night. Me and you were supposed to have dessert down by the water. And while you was dancing with Eugene up in the uh, ballroom, he sent his little cronies down to whoop my ass. And I was coughing up blood while you was on the dance floor with your little, with your husband. And she said, listen, Eugene, at the end of the day, that's the father of my children. So you already know how this going to go. Like, I, I get it. I love you. You know, we, 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 we love each other. But that is the father of my children. And as the father of my children, I ain't never going to do nothing that's going to jeopardize or ruin his reputation um, and all of that. Like, you know, and they, they had it out. And Franklin told her point blank. Franklin was like, listen. Sorry. Franklin let her know, listen. You know, you, when after all that was said and done, you still overlooked me. I was supposed to be CEO. You or Eric ain't ready for that, but you still overlooking me. And he told her, he said, well, I tell you what. You can keep this to yourself. 
about who did what to who, or Eric is going to jail right along with me. If I'm going, Eric going. Because she had already told him that Eric was the one that killed the reporter. And baby, Franklin went rolling up out of there. I said, ooh, she's seeing the other side of Franklin. She is seeing the other side of him. I said, okay. Um, and then Franklin sees Ginger on the way out, and Ginger tells her, tells Franklin how, you know, good of a conversation him and her, him and, I mean, her and Eric, um, Margaret had, and how Margaret even invited her to come down uh, to the, to the, um, to the, you know, the little, the little, the house, the country house, and she's waiting on Margaret. He was like, child, you'll be sitting here waiting for Margaret till you blew in the face. You keep waiting on Margaret if you want to, okay? Um, and then, um, Becky goes back to the house, and she walks in the house, and she actually sees Paul is dead. She was uh, coming out of the hospital. Eric was bringing her home from the hospital, and she sees Paul is dead, so we got that. And then Ginger goes home. Remember, Ginger rented out the house. Her mom got out of rehab, and she was like, oh, mom, I'm so sorry, I forgot. And she was like, oh, that's okay, baby. She said, I had a friend come by, um, and he's going to have dinner. They're going to have dinner with us. And she was like, oh, really? And she sees the table setting for three instead of two, and she was like, oh, okay. And she said, yes, yeah, um, you know, it's somebody that, you know, wants to see you. And she was like, somebody wants to see me. And baby, who come walking up from out of the back of the house? Eugene. I said, now, I don't know what the finale going to look like, but baby, that's what they gave us. So anyway, y'all let me know what y'all think. Drop it in those comments. Peace. My bad, I forgot this last little part. Margaret burned all the evidence. So Margaret burned all the evidence that, that, Mark, um, that um, Eric had taken from the reporter's house. And that's when, just at that moment, Rose showed up and let her mama know she was getting married. But then here come uh, Mark getting up out the car. And, of course, she don't know that Mark ain't really Eugene's son. So the look on her face was like, you got to be fucking kidding me. Anyway, that's how it ended, okay? Okay, talk to y'all later. Peace.